Hey there! It's a Tuesday, which means it's time for another in real life video. Fortunately, it's getting uh, too hot in real life, and we're in that sort of three month period where it's a little bit tougher to wear uh, a fun little jacket, right? So, unfortunately, uh, we have to skip out until sometime in September, usually, is that period. But hey, we can uh, accessorize, as it were, <laughs> and try and put a fit together that way. Anyway, anyway, that's neither here nor there. This week, we have another gentle viewer submitted question. We're finally getting back onto those. Uh, of course, mind you, uh, within the next week or so of real time from when this comes out, we'll do a couple watch alongs because we've got, uh, you know, as the, the temperatures start coming up, so too are the video games. Uh, we've, we've got the uh, sort of summer game fest and the Xbox One coming up. We just recently did a watch along for the state of play, the Sony PlayStation state of play. Uh, so, hey, look forward to that if you're into those kinds of videos or if you enjoyed the last one. It was kind of a riot. Anyway, uh, this one, like I said, is a general viewer submitted question. And of course, you can always submit your own questions if you have any. Uh, helps me a ton if you put a question mark in there. Uh, just for me to sort of control F and search the page for whenever I go back and start filling it out. I read all the comments as I get them, but I'm also, if you watch this channel a lot, you'll know I'm incredibly forgetful. Uh, so, <laughs> helps a lot whenever I go to fill out my, like, document that has all the questions on it. Helps if I can just look for question marks. Anyway, this one comes from a gentle viewer whose username should be somewhere in the lower uh, portion of the screen, right about now. And they ask... As of at least right now, what are some of my, or what is my favorite playthrough that I have done on the channel specifically? Uh, which is kind of a, a difficult question. There's definitely games that I didn't quite enjoy so much and that I kind of enjoyed approaching like more academically, right? Or it was a lot tougher to find the fun inside of the game, as it were. Uh, and also... There are a lot of playthroughs that I was expecting to enjoy, right? Like, for instance, you know, the the Skyrim playthrough. A lot of BGS playthroughs, I'm, I'm always candid about the fact that I kind of unabashedly really enjoy their formula, right? I, I don't really... It's very difficult for me to get bored of it. I enjoy it a whole lot. Um, it just meshes with me. I think it's super fun. It's not for everybody, but, uh, wow, it definitely feels like it's for me. Uh, so I'll omit those from the list because those seem like such obvious shoe ends, right? Like, uh, it's, it wouldn't be very exciting if I was just like, yeah, obviously it's the Skyrim playthrough. There's 502 videos of the Skyrim playthrough. The, <laughs> a BGS game playthrough on this channel feels more like a part of my life rather than a playthrough in and of itself, right? Like, I can think back to moments when I did, like, Morrowind Mondays Volume 1, and that feels like a different era, a different almost version of myself than Volume 2. And even, like, the earlier portions of Volume 2 when we were still sort of in vanilla content and whatnot. I hate to use the word content, but unfortunately it's starting to become part of my parlance. I hate it. Uh, but, <laughs> sorry, that was very, like, desperate. Like, oh, I hate it, I hate it. Uh, but nonetheless... Um, probably some of my favorites are ones that, that took me by surprise, right? Ones that, where I was very, like, uh, surprised, like, oh, I, I'm not expecting too much, or I'm actively expecting to dislike this game, or I don't know what to expect from this, I'm going in kind of, like, uh, completely fresh on it, I don't know what's going on. Um, it would be something like that. And I'll give you multiple, and we'll, we'll end on... What I would guess is probably my favorite, right? It's hard to, it's hard to quantify, certainly. It's hard to sort of like ascribe like, oh, this is my absolute favorite, right? I feel as if whenever you get sufficiently into anything, any sort of like hobby, you begin to have like a period, like as you're just getting in, you're like, oh yeah, I've got this favorite. This one's my favorite. But the deeper and deeper in you get, the harder it becomes to pick one favorite or even like a top three or a top five, right? Um, it, like, you know, I imagine 
the vast majority of people who watch this channel are into video games. It's incredibly difficult. The more video games you have played and the more you have enjoyed, it's very difficult to be like, oh, this is my one absolute favorite video game, right? It's so, so very difficult. Same goes to like, if you're into music, you know, if you're into um, like reading actual like literature books and stuff, a any sort of thing like that, um, it's so difficult to pick just one because it's like, oh, if I'm in the mood for this, then this is my favorite. Or on some days, I really enjoy this, but I wouldn't want to hang out with it or enjoy it all the time, right? I need something else in there, too. Uh, right. It's kind of that situation, right? The, I don't know. What, what do they say? Variety is a spice of life or is it brevity? So it's, it's some kind of spice and it's fantastic. Anyway. Um, one of, well, we'll start at a tertiary one, right? Not necessarily my third favorite, but man. What really surprised me and how much I liked it, it has to be our Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines playthrough that we did, what, two or three Halloweens ago? I did it almost for all of October. We, we poured a little bit over into November. But holy cow, without talking too much about the playthrough or the game in case you want to play it or watch it yourself, I was not expecting to like it at all. Um, I was expecting this will just be a fun, goofy Halloween romp. I didn't really know too much about like how beloved it was. I thought that people liked that game for reasons which I would dislike it, right? Because I generally, um, when it comes to sort of like vampire stuff, you know, when it comes to sort of vampire tropes and whatnot in most media, um, I tend to think like, okay, this might be a little self-serious. This might be a little like, I don't know, pretentious in a, in a sense, right? This might be a little too much for me. This might be a little too much like, oh, darkness and misery and despair and gloom, which really doesn't vibe with me at all um, in that sense. I do love darkness and despair and misery. Don't Don't get me wrong, but it has to be delivered in sort of a more melancholic way. Right. Which will come up later. But um, more so when it's more like, you know, oh, this is very brooding. This is very like, um, you know, you're you're huffing, you're chuffing. Is that the word? Is that the term? I don't know. But um, I I really thought I would not like it. But the more and more I played of it, I originally approached it being like kind of tongue in cheek, like oh, I'm a weird vampire guy or whatever. But as it develops, and I still maintain that because that was very fun for me, but the game kind of leans into that in some ways. And just like the writing and the like social commentary in that game really <laughs> shocked me a lot. Um, it was such a pleasant surprise and I enjoyed it so much. And still on my to-do list is to do another run through of it. And because I enjoyed it so much, even though it totally seems like the... Uh, the sequel, the follow-up, um, done years later by a completely different studio. Uh, it doesn't look like it's gonna, it's, it's probably gonna have some issues, right? It's got a quite the troubled development. So I think a lot of people are expecting the worst, but I'm hoping for the best, but also expecting the worst. Um, we're almost certainly going to try to fit that onto the channel at some point because I just love the original so much. Um, it's, it's absolutely fantastic. And it even has some lineage going, uh, between, a uh, classic fallout to that, right? Um, Tim Kane, if you watch his channel, which I highly recommend, he's fantastic. Uh, he does very short little talks on games and development and whatnot. Uh, he directly worked on it, right? At Troika. Anyway, so that's got to be maybe my tertiary one. Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines. Uh, definitely check it out. It's kind of spooky. It's not really a horror game. It definitely has some spooky moments, though. But uh, it's very fun, very vampire tropey stuff. Um, surprisingly enjoyable. Some parts of it don't hold up, uh, but the vast majority of it does. Um, so my secondary one would probably have to be. And granted, you know, as we go through this, 
right? There are also games that I just really enjoyed, but I don't think the playthrough in and of itself was that, like, rip-roaring of a time. It was mostly because, like, whoa, the game is so awesome. This game rocks, right? Which I would I would totally ascribe to something like uh, Doom Eternal, which we did do a playthrough on. A fairly short playthrough, granted. But I really enjoyed it. Um, but that said, you know, it wasn't... There wasn't anything, like, particularly unique about the playthrough. I was just playing the game, right? Um, this is the the difficult part of sort of a more action-focused video game, right? It's difficult to sort of, I don't know, walk that line? I, I'm not sure what the word would be here. Um, but uh, I did very much enjoy that, but I wouldn't put that on, like, one of my favorite playthroughs I've done. I would say it's literally my favorite first-person shooter, right? But... Hopefully that helps you understand the distinction here. So another one that I really enjoyed is Pentiment. We did that recently um, from a little micro team at Obsidian run by Josh Sawyer. Also some lineage from Fallout, Fallout New Vegas specifically. Um, he was the director of New Vegas as well as uh, the Outer Worlds, right? Um, well, not 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 to... Uh, Josh Sawyer specifically, but uh, like the art team and whatnot. Some at least one member of the art team worked on, I believe, the Outer Worlds and Pillars of Eternity, right? Pillars of Eternity, uh, one and two, Deadfire, definitely some lineage there. But Pentiment was just so well paced. I felt it was fairly short. This was this was done around last year, I think it was. Yeah. No, no, it was the year before last, wasn't it? Yeah. Goodness. T time has become a little bit wild. <laughs> um, I really, really enjoyed that. Right. And I, I didn't know really what to expect from it because I'm not like a huge history buff. I'm not super into like history. Um, I have, I, like I frequently mention in videos, I have a passing interest in how video games sort of portray religion. And this was a video game that very much focused on, like, a very historically accurate depiction of Catholicism from a very specific period of time in a very specific uh, part of the world, right? And it did it so incredibly with so much, like, thorough nuance, right, wherein you have various generalities, but then other um, more, sp I, g I guess without spoiling anything, um... It wasn't afraid to, to shine a light on, like, outliers of stuff, right? And I thought it was incredibly, like like I said, nuanced and generally respectful of, of the people it was dealing with, right? And granted, they were all fictional people, but they were certainly representative of, like, their time period and, like, their beliefs and whatnot, right? They were, it was very... It, it was just handled so well. It, it was handled so with such a great degree of nuance. And I just had such a enjoyable time with it. Like, I still catch myself, like, humming the music from that game, the, like, main theme. I think it's, like, Andreas's um, departing and arriving themes, right? I love it so much. I actually picked up... This isn't, like, sponsored or anything, but... um when when it comes to games I really like in this way, uh, I like to get a little something. And I got... Uh, my mug here is from Pentiment. Sorry, it's going to cling with my spoon. I've got some coffee in here. I'm not going to take a drink of it right now, even though I've got like a, a quarter or a third left of coffee. Uh, but, man, I loved it so much. This is like the mug that I use... Every day since I got it, right? I print every day that I, I drink from a mug for coffee or tea or whatever the hell. Uh, this is the mug that I use. Uh, sort of like a fun reminder of like how much I enjoyed that game. And like I said, sometimes I just catch myself humming the little like catchy theme and whatnot. It was, it was such a great game. Um, it was, like I said, it was incredibly paced. Uh, probably one of the, one of the two games on the channel that, was paced so well that that I can't help but when I think back to it, I think like, man, this was just really well paced. The other one being Fallout 1. But um, Fallout 1 won't be on this list because like I had said, um, I went into Fallout 1 even though I hadn't played it myself. Um, 
I went in with the expectation like, oh, I'm probably going to really like this, right? I'm probably really going to like this. And sure enough, it uh, it holds up incredibly well, in my opinion, and I really liked it. Um, but that sort of leads us to our prime sort of zone of what game I enjoyed the most uh, for a playthrough, right? Like I said, we've had to admit a few you know, or some that don't make sense, like I said in the case of Doom Eternal, why it wouldn't be up there, even though I really enjoyed it. Anyway, my number one one that, that we've had a playthrough of so far, and we can do this again in the future, I would say. Um, maybe we'll sort of have this be like a a demarcating point, so like going forward in the future, we can talk about playthroughs and stuff in the same regard. I don't know. Uh, but one that I really, really enjoyed... And it stuck with me. And this is another one where I catch myself like listening to the soundtrack and like humming along to it throughout my day sometimes. And I, I still think about um, sort of playing through it again because I played through it in kind of a weird state. That being, and I bring it up a lot in other playthroughs as well. Uh, in fact, all of these really, right? Yeah. Now that I think of, of it, uh, when we're playing other games, you may notice that I'll name drop these. Or mention that, oh, this feels very much like this, right? It's because it's still in my mind. I liked it so much. Um, Disco Elysium is undoubtedly my favorite that we have tackled on the channel. I played it sort of in its pre-final cut state. So this was when it is like, there's no full voice acting. It's limited voice acting at best. And the voice cast is different, too. Um, but... My God, that game really, really stuck with me and I thought was just absolutely incredible. Um, I still want to play at some point, like I said, similar to VTMB uh, with like a Malkavian playthrough or even something else with different choices and whatnot. Um, I would still love to play through Disco Elysium with like a different build or at the very least with the final cut installed. Um, I've even thought about like sort of doing like a, a not not for the channel, but sort of like in my own free time playing with uh, playing the game again with my partner or whatever to sort of like uh, do choices together in a sense like that, because I think that would be very enjoyable. But my gosh, as I alluded to earlier, I do enjoy sort of like uh, games that have a lot of despair and misery and sort of like. I don't know, feelings of being, like, downtrodden. You know, I enjoy that. I love, like, tragedy. Uh, but it has to be delivered in a certain way. And my God, Disco Elysium does it so fantastically. Uh, it delivers it in this sort of, like, melancholic way. And it balances out, it balances itself out uh, with comedy in such a, a fantastic way, I think, wherein the comedic moments are sometimes aren't even that funny, right? If you sort of take them out from their context, but the context absolutely is crucial because everything else in the game is so very sad and depressing. Um, it makes the com the comedic moments just pop that much more, right? Uh, but I found it to be incredibly affecting. Uh, it is the first playthrough that I did on the channel that had me while recording it just like brought me to tears twice. Um, uh, another one being Pentiment, um, which we had just mentioned, but this is the first one that, and the, uh, the only one that's brought me to tears twice, uh, because it was just so incredibly sad. Uh, it was absolutely incredible. There was a point in the playthrough, uh, sort of in the latter quarter or latter third, where there were just lines and lines of dialogue that I was trying to like work through and read while I was just like in the process of crying because it was so emotionally affecting. Uh, I found it to be absolutely incredible, uh, sort of, you know, as well. We now hear of like how troubled the studio has been and troubles at which they have gone through. And it has now sort of entered is like speed run this sort of CRPG Hall of Fame trope wherein a lot of them sort of have like a troubled development cycle or 
um, trouble after the fact in which they're made and then something happens and they stop doing games like that, right? Uh, as is the case with, like, for instance, classic Fallout's Black Isle, right? A um, lot of these CRPGs and whatnot run into this problem. And like I said, this has just seemingly, like, sped run or speed run the entire, <laughs> I don't know, tragic series of events in real life. But, uh, my God, absolutely fantastic game. And as I mentioned, for, for some games, if I'm able to do it, if it's a game that I really like, um, I try to get something, right? And in this case, um, especially in the case of Pentiment and uh, Disco Elysium, I, I didn't pay for them, right? In the case of Pentiment, it was, well, I guess I indirectly did. I got it um, as part of my, my Game Pass sub. And then for, um, what do you call it? For Disco Elysium, I just reached out to them and they like sent me a copy. Right, which was absolutely incredible. Uh, I just, I went and I shooted my shot and uh, it paid off. But I liked it so much, I got um, this right here, this artwork, right? I got that. That is from Disco Elysium. It's, um, you can't really hardly even discern it from back here, but I think every so often, like, uh, folks who are into Disco Elysium will, like, see that and be able to clock it. Right. And as well, uh, one of my neckties, which is frankly probably my worst one because it's completely made of polyester. And I ordered it off of their like store way back when, like just recently after I had finished the game, uh, before we heard about all of the like wild stuff going on there at, uh, at Zom. Uh, my most horrific necktie, right? It's all completely polyester. The back of it, it's very obviously like printed on. Uh, the entire back of it uh, doesn't even have any, like, proper... Well, no, no, I think it does have color on the back of it. It's, like, through the loop or something, right? It's very poorly made, <laughs> I guess I'll say, but um, having played the game, right, and being familiar with it, it's absolutely fitting that this be an absolutely, like, terrible necktie right <laughs> to where it's like all synthetic fibers the make of it is kind of trashy uh it's probably gonna age like hell right um i don't know probably every time i wear it i get more microplastics put inside of my body <laughs> um but i don't know it feels right it feels feels correct but uh yeah disco elysium has got to be uh, one of my absolute favorites like i said i i go back and i listen to it every so often uh, every, every like winter, whenever I see, I even remarked on this while playing the game that it, it very much reminded me of sort of the, the feeling of, of like going through a more urban or suburban area, at least in the United States, but I'm sure this applies to pretty much everywhere. Um, uh, whenever there's snow out and it gets shoveled or plowed or whatever, into a big pile and it's kind of like all dirty and melty and it's got like this nasty gray brown slush sort of like in a parking lot or by a, a street curb every time i see that in real life i i am reminded of disco elysium and i cannot help but feel like this twinge of like i don't know seasonal depression or something right this like feeling of melancholy as it were every time i see it and uh Oh no, it's, it's incredible. Um, I still think about it, uh, fairly often, obviously, like I've got the, the artwork up. Uh, so every time I, I, t I try and like look at that, I, I think of it, but, uh, man, it was absolutely fantastic. And like I said, when we played through it, I, because it was an earlier version of the game, I had to do the voices for everything. Um, sort of similar to a lot of our, our playthroughs of older games where they're not fully voiced. Or even newer games where, you know, like they're working on a budget, right? It's very understandable. Um, I sort of have to contribute my own like voice acting to it. And that was kind of fun in and of itself, right? Um, I don't know. It was, it was incredibly enjoyable. I loved it so much. Uh, I thought I had heard of it, of Disco Elysium when I had gotten into it. Uh, mind you, we, I haven't talked too much about like some of the best parts. It's an incredibly political game, right? I would argue that nearly every, probably literally every game that we have played on this channel has been political in some way, right? I think I think probably most games are. 
Um, like, like I would say probably lower on that list would be like, I don't know, doom, <laughs> right? Uh, you could probably figure out a way to, to get it in there though. Uh, but man, I, I love politics in games. I, I love dealing with political stuff in games. I think it's very interesting. I think it's super fascinating. And Disco Elysium does not shy away from that whatsoever. It wears it on its sleeve, right? It's incredibly just open about it. And not only that, but it pulls it off really well, right? The execution, it not only is the vision there, but the execution is absolutely spot on in there. Um, it's fantastic. I cannot recommend it enough. In fact, I would recommend all three of these. Uh, in fact, I guess that's what this is. This is, this is a recommendation. Um, but yeah, holy cow, I absolutely loved it. Um, I still think back to it very often. Like I said, especially in the winter, I think back to it. Um, I still will, like just recently, in playing Morrowind Mondays, as we were going through this sort of Andothran Thieves Guild, which I think will be renamed in the future if you're watching this um, in the future, this video. Um, and Dothran, I believe is due for a rename. I think, I think it'll be Balfoyan or something like that. Uh, no, no, I think Foyan is in the game. Uh, regardless, there was definitely some writing in there from one of the, the mod team, uh, whoever did the, the writing for it, who actually <laughs> commented on the channel, which was surprising in and of itself. Um, uh, but I, I commented like, oh my gosh, this, this reads very Disco Elysium, this specific quest arc with the Thieves Guild. It reads as, as being something like, like they were clearly inspired by Disco and it feels so much so, right? I'm not even sure if that's the case or if it was just complete happenstance, right? I don't know. But either way, I thoroughly enjoyed it in this, in a similar vein. And every so often, like I said, when I'm playing through something, I'll be like, this is very Disco. What I mean is it's very much like Disco Elysium. And, uh, I don't know. I guess that's, that's effectively like a dog whistle for other people who enjoyed Disco Elysium, right? Whenever I'm like, oh, this is very disco. I notice as well, uh, some gentle viewers as well do that for me as well. They will say like, oh, this is very disco. Or I had someone comment on uh, my Instagram where I like to post fit pics. Um, but um, we'll say like, oh, that's a very disco tie. And of course, it's my horrific necktie from the game. Uh, but yeah, very much enjoyed that I would say that was definitely got to be up there. Uh, I didn't, when I went into it, I was worried that I would have difficulty getting into it. In fact, uh, because I had heard ahead of time that Disco Elysium is so political. I was like, man, is this going to be above my head? Am I actually a smart enough person to even like, uh, parse and comprehend the majority of this? And like I said, the execution is there. Uh, it's, shockingly easy and simple to parse i think um in my experience i had very little difficulty with it uh and there's even there's even stuff that um is beyond like like is deeper down the rabbit hole as it were uh that you can sort of look at and explore and sort of consider and think about with the game right like various bits of symbology that correlate to real life symbology and whatnot uh, we I remark on it a little bit at the end of the playthrough. Like I said, not not spoiling too much, uh, or trying not to spoil anything. Uh, but super fascinating, super amazing. Like I said, I I didn't expect I would glom onto it as much as I did. I was worried that like this would be too advanced that I wouldn't be able to tackle it and comprehend it. But my God, they do a fantastic job of sort of getting you in there. I think, um, yeah, just just absolutely gotta be one of the best um yeah those are my, three of my absolute favorite playthroughs like i said had to admit some some don't make sense here and uh as you start to move all those things around uh i don't know it becomes very clear that like there's actually a pretty small pool from which i can pick from uh but yeah those are three that i really enjoyed and the one that i guess i probably enjoyed most um these are a lot that uh like I said, I, I liked them so much, I got little knickknacks that uh, I try to use or enjoy on a daily basis rather than just having, uh, you know, shoved into a closet or something. I, I hate I hate that. Um, if I want to if I if I'm going to spend money on something, I want to actually use it. I don't want to have it like. Put away somewhere, you know, 
I don't know. I think maybe growing up uh, with older folks who had like, you know, China sets, sets of like plates and cups and stuff that you're not supposed to use or like you put a blanket or like a covering over a, a like chair or whatever so as to uh, not spoil it. I, I would rather just sit on it and enjoy it while it's there, right? I I, uh, I like the, the functionality of it, even if that functionality is purely as um, decor, right? All right, that ought to do it for now. Uh, next Tuesday, we'll almost certainly do another question. As I had mentioned, if you have more questions, feel free to submit them. Uh, it helps a lot if you do a question mark at the end. Um, and of course, I think it's around this weekend, right? That we'll do a couple watch alongs for the sort of big uh, viewings of commercials, right? All right, that'll do it for now. Till next time, please take care of each other.